Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. Am I clear or the voice is clear? Right. Making your dreams come true. Who doesn't like it? All of you, have you seen dreams? Of course, sometimes we dream on various specific things, isn't it? But how to choose which dream that you should chase? Because the, um, if you go through the internet and search for the various research, research that has been done, you'll find that for a day, can you guess the amount of impulses or thoughts that are coming into our minds? I did a bit of a research on that. And the, the number of thoughts that come to our mind is unbelievable. Any guesses? Any guesses? For a day? Just guess, just guess. 5,000, OK. Some more. 25. The research says between 60,000 to 80,000 per day. That's the average, according to the latest psychological research. But then some of those are very important, and we sometimes miss those. So the importance of selecting the dreams and which dreams that we should really follow needs a bit of careful analysis and thought. And that's what I'm trying to explain to you using my own experiences. Some stories from my life will help you to understand how to select uh, which dreams to follow. I think that's the easiest way rather than my telling you theories and then uh, quoting from this book and that book. Let me take a few examples from my own life. Okay. When I was a child, my father, I mean, my, in my family, my father was a lawyer. So from my childhood, I have seen many of his very rich friends. And then I was also crazy. I wanted to become rich. Because lots of rich people used to come because to, to uh, consult my father, being a lawyer. Rich people, of course, have a lot of problems as well. So to discuss about their cases, they come to my place. I see them coming in fancy cars. I can remember even uh, Davis Bava coming in his mini mock. That was a memorable sight I had. So anyway, all these things made me really crazy for money. And I started going after money. I started doing many things. Number of things I tried. The whole purpose was to just make money. Nothing else. What happened? Everything failed. I'll tell you some of the examples. I tried gemming. I tried gem buying and selling, gem mining. I tried agriculture. I tried some fancy industries, making incubators for poultry farms. I can't remember. So many, so many things I tried. The whole purpose was just to make money. Nothing worked. It was miserable. I wasted so many years and nothing worked. In the process, I was not able to even enter the university because my A-level results was not up to the mark to enter the university. So my father said, now Radit, you have been doing this and that, there's no end. It's time that you go into a job. And he put me to Ceylon Tobacco to be trained as a field instructor. So I had a little bit of agriculture experience, which I did, but then, the training was in a remote area in Madhugoda, that's off Hunasgiriya. I and about another 30 in the batch, we were there together and uh, undergoing this training. It was really hard. That's not an easy thing. We, were all, were, we all were given one fourth of an acre. All, all everybody who were with us got one third of jungle. Thick jungle, we had to clear it on our own. And I can't go and help my friend. No. My quarter of an acre, I have to do. 
another friend, he has to do it on his own. No helping each other. It was very clear instructions. And then, of course, we had to make our beds to uh, plant tobacco, all those things. I can yet remember clearing the jungle. It was just thick jungle. Every day, cobras and then uh, wipe all types of poisonous snakes were coming, and then I had to really deal with them. There's no time to even look at it because we had targets. There's no way that we can play with them. So we had to handle them and then go ahead with our work. And that's the type of work we had. It was very tough. Early morning, in very cold weather, we had to go to the water stream, have a bath, and then by 5 o'clock, take our memories, crowbars, and everything. Go to the work site. And that's that's the type of training, fantastic training. Of without the training, anyone would be definitely a good uh, person to train anyone. So during this time, I also happened to see a tragedy which another uh, 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 known person had. He was a well to do person and he passed away. And the entire family, his children, wife, there was no way for them to live. They were virtually begging on the road. And I saw this happening. Then I was thinking, what happens if that happens to my father? Same thing, same scenario. My father was the only breadwinner in our family. There was no one else. And as a field instructor, now this was in 1976. As a field instructor, my salary is 750 rupees. And I knew I had four siblings, my mother, father, if something, if my father becomes sick, I would look after all of them. With 750, it's difficult. For me, getting married and having a own family will also be a dream. And uh, my grand aunt was with us. So looking after them is not going to be possible now. The tragedy I saw in that friend was really bothering me. And I started thinking, well, what am I going to do if it happens to my father? Uh, can I allow my mother and brothers and sisters to do the same thing that family did? So this was really worrying me. Then I was thinking, whilst undergoing this training, I started thinking, how am I going to do it? I knew my salary will be 750 plus 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 by yearly, there'll be some sort of an increment. That's not going to work. The, as, a, as a very small, as a teenager, I would say, I, I saw, I also knew my father's sister's sons. She had three sons. All these sons were engineers and they, had a, they were living a luxurious life. So the only possibility I saw, because every every attempt I read, I was depending on luck, gemming, gem mining, gem buying and selling all the time. And I saw these people, the three engineers, with their education, with their knowledge, doing, uh, living a very luxurious life. And I thought, the only thought that came to my mind is why don't I also somehow just study, pursue my studies, and become an engineer. So from that time onwards, whilst taking these memories and growths in my on my shoulder, I in my mind I was an engineer, living the, the life of an engineer in my mind. It's so wonderful. Unbelievable things happen when you really do like that. When you live in your dream, it's I I, I can't explain how it happens but you start seeing avenues. It's like, I would say, now you have a television set here and it's switched off, you don't see anything. You switch it on, sometimes you see something, but if you want to see Rupa Haini or whatever, you tune to that channel. So similarly, when you train your mind on a certain frequency, on a certain channel, then you get relevant things coming your way. Just like what you get on the television when you tune into the right frequency. So when I was, oh, this is far away in Madhubada, 
no, we had no connection with them. At that time, there were no telephones, no, I mean, telephones are there, but no handphones like now. Only the newspapers were there. And one day, I happened to come across a piece of paper, wrapping newspaper. So it came uh, into our dormitory. Somebody had wrapped something, and this piece, piece of newspaper came. If I was not living in that dream, I would not have seen it. But now, this in this little piece of newspaper, I saw an advertisement calling for special apprentices for engineering. And that came to me in a piece of newspaper wrapping. Immediately applied. So that's, that's the way that I wanted to move engineering. And I applied, got it, got the opportunity, I was selected. But then again, there was a challenge. Now this course is for five years and I was getting 750 rupees. When I was getting 750, if I take this challenge, I have to reduce my income to 115 rupees per month for five years. But I was prepared to take it. I was prepared to do any sacrifice to go on my desired path. And I took it. And that's how everything changed in my life. Of course, although I said I went there for five years, within less than two years and nine months, I finished my London exams. Apparently, I did CEI London. Within two years and nine months, I finished all the exams, which generally would have taken three, four years. I rapidly did one after the other and came out as a graduate engineer in two years and nine months. And that's the power of really living in your dream. And I experienced, I was a special apprentice in the port, not an engineer. There were so many other engineers. There was a, I can yet remember, there was a huge backlog when I was having my training in the foundry. The backlog was big, a lot of items to be made. And the management decided to give it on subcontract to another company. And you know what happens in port. The, the people, the workers got together and they said, how can we give it to the private contracts? And they have a big half of there. So I am also among the workers. I asked what's, what's happening. Oh, see, these the people are going to give it to uh, some contracting company. What is going to happen to our jobs? And this and that. I said, okay, okay, so let's see. So now, although I was a special apprentice, I was special apprentice in my mind, I was an engineer. So I thought there must be some solution. And I went to the British Council, searched for various things. And then I found if we can turn into die casting from sand casting, things will become very fast. So I went to the top engineer and asked him, sir, can I try some to make some dies for these things? So he was laughing and said, what are you trying to do? I said, I will go to the race and then make these things and then uh, let's see by the time i have finished my day training in the machine shop and everything and i asked can you can you stop the order for two weeks don't place the order to this private company just give me two weeks for me to try and i tried it a lot of workers in the machine shop came and helped me they put the in various machines people worked my design and we did the trials and it was, it worked like magic. It was very fast. So when the engineers came, they saw the products coming out like poppers coming out from the pens. And he said, uh, in Sinhalese, he said, maybe they are not organic. And the engineer laughed at the people saying, now we don't need you, we don't need you even, because a few people are enough. We are getting the goods. We did a very short time, we finished the backlog and that is how we did it. Again, living the dream, power of living in your dream. You can see lots of new ways. Later, I realized all these were possible because of one thing, which a lot of, lot of us don't really care about. 
what made me become an engineer? A person who did not get A-level results properly. I only had two Cs, one S, that's all. And I failed in chemistry. So a person who did that, all of a sudden becomes really good at studying, did the engineering exams rapidly one after the other, got qualified, and then become, became an engineer. So I realized that I have, there was a dream instilled in me, a lifelong dream, a vision, a vision towards which I'm doing everything in my life, even up today. That's enabling or enhancing lives of people who need it through compassion and expertise, not through shield. And that's the that's my since then. I never realized during my even my apprenticeship period on the journey to becoming an engineer that. I had a vision. After achieving that, only I realized I am just chasing this dream of supporting others through knowledge and experience and making the lives better. And up to now, so so one first mission was making my to safeguard in my family, which I did. And when my father passed away, I was ready to take over the entire family. I was strong enough. There was no problem in what problem whatsoever. I was also married and my child was there, but there was no problem in looking after the entire family. I had a very good job at that time. So since then, everything I did, every company I formed up, every invention I made, every institution I worked, and all the acts I do is towards the same vision. If you look at the visions of my organizations. It's in line with the same thing. Making lives more enjoyable, making the lives better through technology and compassion. So it's very important for us to understand. Sometimes we don't know what our visions are. Dig into your thoughts and see what are you, what do you really want in life? Friends, I'm telling you, it's so unbelievable. The life becomes so enjoyable when you, are, when you have a vision, which really you want to do in life. You want to follow that vision in life. Life becomes really enjoyable. There's no way that you will have a sad life. Life becomes so enjoyable when you chase your vision. You do everything to reach there. It's like... I when I say a vision, there are sometimes you don't mix up with the standard vision statement and mission statements of various companies. You get in the boats. Even now in our companies, every every organization had a vision and mission. I don't know what it is even. Uh, so I asked some recently. I asked my some of the chief officers. Do you know what the vision mission board? Yes, nobody can remember even. So that those are all made for or boards or whatever, and then. Um, according to various theory books. But the vision is something that you really want to go after. I would say it's like a guiding star. I mean, you can't reach the star, but then you are going towards it. And the missions in between are the things that you need to do to, towards that, towards that uh, goal. The first mission was safeguarding the family. And there were so many other missions, in making inventions, starting institutions, all towards the same thing. Every, every product we make in line with the same vision. So during this very short time, I only wanted to share you a valuable thought. Dig into your mind. It may take sometimes days. It may take sometimes weeks. Find out what your real vision is. Write it down in a piece of paper. Do everything in line with that. And then you will see Making dreams come true is just fun because you have a giant within you. The giant gets up. You can awaken the giant within you only when you are going through a vision. 
and I wish you strength and courage to do that. Good luck.